first, we need to uh, remove the current pod network. And here in the specific case uh, of AWS, we do that like it's a two step process. First step, I need to remove the AWS node daemon set. So I kubectl delete daemon set AWS node in the namespace cube system. And then there is a second step. And we are going to see that second step in just a few minutes. Um, but first, I'm going to install the new, uh, the, the, the new pod network. And for the new pod network, I'm going to use that cube router, which I've mentioned a few times before. Uh, so how do I do that? I'm going to do, um, let's see, Helm install. OK, so I'm not going to, to, to have a deep dive into Helm. I'm just going to explain quickly. Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. And here I'm going to say, OK, go and fetch something from uh, this particular Helm repository, chart repository. Um, and uh, I want to install something called Kube Router. So that's, that's going to be the name of the release. So the name of the instance that I put on my cluster. Uh, I want to use the chart called Cube Router as well. I want to put it in the namespace cube, called Cube Router. And I want to create the namespace too. And if I didn't forget anything, that might work. Yes, awesome. All right. Now let's uh, take a look. OK, I'm going to go to the cube router on namespace. Normally, I should have a few pods, except they are in crash loop back off. I'm like, OK, what now? You know, what's going on with these pods? Uh, so I'm log. Let's uh, logs curl. Let's look at the logs here. OK, so this is complaining, saying fail to get Pod cider. Okay, why do we need a pod cider? What it is, you know? Um, so the the pod cider is the subnet, like the network range, if you will, that's going to be used on one particular node. Uh, the the way Cube Router works is that I need to allocate a subnet to each node. Uh, so you can imagine, like it's as if my network was a, a big pie of IP addresses, and I need to kind of cut slices of that pie and uh, allocate them to my nodes. Um, normally, when we do something like that, we reconfigure the Kubernetes control plane, like specifically uh, the controller manager. We add a couple of flags to say, please allocate a subnet, like a CIDR, to each node. Uh, and, um, and this is the big subnet for the whole cluster. And basically, then each time you, a node joins the cluster, the controller manager will be like, OK, welcome. This is your subnet. Have fun. But here, I don't want to do that. I want to do something a little bit simpler because you know I want to finish on time. Um, so I'm going to allocate these pod CIDRs manually. Uh, thanks to an annotation. OK, so let's list our nodes. Perfect. And now I do kubectl annotate node. I annotate that node. And the annotation, that's going to be cube router io pod cider. And here, um, I give the subnet like this. OK, that's one node accounted for. Next node. Awesome. Next one. And that's where everyone is happy that I only have three nodes in my cluster because this gets boring real quick. OK. Now I can take a look again at, uh, sorry, at my pods. And they are still in crash loop back off because basically that you know when when a container crashes, Kubernetes restarts it, but it's going to wait a little bit before restarting that pod. It's going to wait, um, and maybe it's going to be when it hits the three minutes mark or something. Yeah, there we go. At least that that particular pod um, is now running. The other one is coming as well. 
So, you know, we just give it 10 more seconds and the three of them are going to be running awesome. So now if I take a look at the logs, this should tell me that everything is nice and peachy. Yep. So we can see something about BGP peers being up, et cetera, et cetera. So quick sidebar for the folks who um, have been trained with, you know, networking, et cetera. Uh, Cube Router is using BGP to exchange routing information between the nodes. Um, so that's pretty interesting. It's doing a full mesh between the nodes. And you can also configure it to open BGP sessions with external routers, route reflectors, et cetera, et cetera. End of the sidebar. Uh, and so now, it looks my, 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 my pod network is up, but if I take a look at my pods here, uh, this is still quite not working. So what's going on here? Well, to understand, I need to go back into a node and I need to have a look at that particular directory here, etc cni net.d. What is this? This is the CNI configuration directory. Uh, so that's where you put your CNI configuration. And I insist your CNI configuration, you know, singular, no S at the end. And here, as you can see, we have multiple CNI configurations, <laughs> plural with the S at the end. So that's why it doesn't work. That's because we have two CNI configuration files and Kubelet is only taking the first one. So, you know, like there are a bunch of questions we could ask here. Um, one of them being, why do we have a directory? Why, why not just a file? And, you know, it's one file, for instance, etccni.conf or something like that. The reason why we have a directory instead of a single file is because with containers, it's pretty easy to share a directory between the host and the container, but it gets really messy when you want to share a file and make changes to that file. Possible, but tricky, messy, et cetera. Well, when you have a directory, it's super easy. So the, the design decision here was, let's put the configuration in a directory. And that way, uh, you know, the, the idea is that when you install your pod network, whether it's this uh, AWS uh, ENI CNI, uh, VPC CNI, excuse me, or if it's Cube Router or Weave or et cetera, they are just going to drop their configuration file in the right place. If you look at the timestamps here, I believe this is GMT. So this is the time at which I deployed the cluster. And this is the time just a few minutes ago when I installed Cube Router. So you, you see that they just dropped their configuration files in place. However, when I removed AWS node earlier, I did not remove that file. And there was no provision whatsoever to remove that file. And that's the second step I was telling you about earlier. You know, I said, okay, to remove the, that network, I need to do two things. First, delete the daemon set. Second step, I need to remove that file. So here again, I'm going to do uh, a nice little for loop. So connect at the node and just rm uh, etc cni net.d slash that file. Um, and that's it. And when I do that, I do not need to restart Kubelet because Kubelet is um, it's monitoring that directory for changes. And you know, like it's going to realize, oh, that file disappeared. So now I'm going to use that other one instead. And if you're wondering how, when, when there are multiple files, how does it decide which one to use? It's going to take the first one in the lexicographic order, you know? So in that case, it's that one because A is before K basically. Okay, now let's have a look. Is this working better? Yep, you can see I still have a few containers that are in container creating state, but there we go. 